Hey folks, welcome to this video on a few frequently asked questions about Worldographer. I'm Joe Wetzel, the creator of the program. And first of all, if I can ask you to subscribe to the videos and to watch some more of them, um, please do. We're trying to remove ads from our videos and we can do that if we get uh, a few more subscribers, but also a whole lot more watch time. So I'm going to add in the comments a couple of the key videos about Worldographer that you might want to check out. So Please do that. Like I said, um, as soon as we can, we're going to drop the ads from these videos, and uh, we still have uh, we have to basically double our watch time in order to do that. So please do. So with that out of the way, uh, top uh, top few frequently asked questions about Worldographer. First of all, um, hey, can I use uh, the maps created in Worldographer uh, for my published product, whether it's free or something that you're charging? Uh, charging for. So uh, yes you can. Uh, the full details of that are up in our help menu. If you go to license uh, and you scroll down to our section 7. Now it might be, depending on what version of the program you're using, you might see something along the lines of uh, you need to credit each each map in the corner of the map or adjacent to the map with something like something like ma map made using Worldographer, but we're not too picky on that. Also if you're using some of our extra icon sets, you want to look at want to look at the licensing terms there. There's generally a bullet point saying you know you have to mention uh, this map was made using uh, these icons, uh, particular product names icons uh, by Keith Curtis, who does most of the map icons that we uh, we do. But the specifics there are going to be in that product description as well. So yes, you can uh, now. In going forward, though, we're changing this license so that you can just just mention it one time in a general credits page, and you don't have to have it adjacent to each each use, each map that uses it. Um, so that's that's the way it, it is. Um, however, I, I should say that just because we're saying that we don't have a problem with it, we're, that we're saying that you can go ahead and, and use the maps created with Worldographer, that's not to say that somebody else couldn't say, oh, that map looks very close to my game world, or those there's a part of that map that looks like ours, and, and, and so forth. So do your due diligence on that, um, and, and uh, that's all I better say about that, or else my uh, my lawyer might want to... <laughs> might want to... Uh, um, uh, reprimand me. So uh, that's point one. Uh, the second thing, uh, grids. How do I change the grid or remove the grid or things along the, along those lines? Um, to do that, you would just untoggle this show checkbox that's next to grid down here on the bottom. Um, if you want to configure it, go ahead and, and click the gear icon that's next to there. And you've got a lot of controls here um, because uh, you've got multiple view levels, uh, map levels in Worldographer where you can have a world, continent, kingdom, and province level map. And so if you're looking at the um, province level, what does the world levels grid look like? And you can control that. But uh, the current levels grid is this top section here. Generally, if you're doing a, a world kingdom map um, and you can change the color, you can change the thickness, you can do a custom color, and you can set the opacity. So for example, I'm believe the default is black, but 25%, so it kind of looks grayish um, in the end. Um, we'll change this just to show you a change. Uh, we'll change it to this dark red maroon type color. You could also, though, um, have a square grid on your hex map uh, or, or both, um, or have a, a battle map that, instead of using the default square grid, uses a, a, a hex grid. So um, you've got those options there as well. Hit OK, and you can see that that change took effect there. Uh, next up, uh, numbering. So I've got the numbers turned on right now. Uh, to turn them on and off, you're going to want to check this box that's next to numbers here. Um, we might change this so it spells out numbers, just so it's a little bit more obvious. Uh, but if you uncheck that, then they all go away. And then just like with the grid, there's a gear icon next to that that allows you to change the font. And then do you want the numbers to be on the bottom, the top, or the middle? Let's go with the top. Um, do you want it to be ordered differently? Do you want a different starting number for the upper left-hand corner hex? Uh, do you want to start with number one? Or, or, or perhaps you've got several maps that you're putting together and you need to start with, you know, 28 or whatever. Same thing for the row. Uh, you've got a separator character, which by default is a, is a period. But say you wanted to have a dash, you can do that. And then padding, you know, so do you want to have um, the padding to being the hundreds digit, 
thousand digit, tens digit, or none. Let's say none, hit OK, and you can see that those changes have taken effect. So that's, uh, that's numbering. Uh, point four. Uh, so here we want to talk about uh, printing and exporting. So when you want to print a map, Worldographer doesn't have a native print functionality because we want to give you an option to preview that map first. So you can come up here to, uh, to the file menu and you can export the, the map as an image, in which case it's going to ask you, well, it's going to give you a reminder, first of all, that the, um, the map, the number of pixels are going to be based on what you've got set over here. So your tile width and your tile height are going to control how many pixels of information actually go into that map. Uh, so if you want that to be, have more pixels of information so you can kind of zoom in and, and on the map, you're going to want to increase this. Um, you know, if you wanted to have one inch hexes, for example, a good rule of thumb is to have these around 300 pixels because, let me get to the next thing here, hit continue, uh, we have DPI, and DPI, as it says here, 72 DPI is typical for screen images, 300 DPI is typical for printed images, although the human eye only sees 150 DPI, unless you're you know, holding the paper super close to your eyes. Um, so you can kind of, you know, typically you would do 300 DPI if you're planning to print that, that image. But, and, and like I was saying, so if you have the tile, a tile size set up to being 300 pixels or thereabout, you're going to end up with something like a, a one inch hex by default. Um, but it's important to say that your printing software might give you options to shrink your map down to fit on a page or even to say, hey, I want this, this image fixed into a you know, five by seven size or I'm poster printing and I want it to be enlarged to, to being whatever. And if you enlarge, a map that doesn't have a lot of pixels. For example, say that we print, say that originally we wanted quarter inch hexes where we're doing something more like 75 pixels when we're, when we're making that map image um, per, per um, you know, width or height. So say we're doing something in the 70s and, and we print that out because originally we're planning to print that out as quarter inch hexes. Um, then what's going to happen is if you try to take that same image and uh, print that on a poster uh, where it's you know two feet by three feet for example uh, you're going to end up with it looking pixelated um, so you're going to want to kind of come back into world for and export it as 300 um, you know pixels high and wide so you can get back to those one inch hexes so you can have you know a, a, um, even a you know 20 some 20 hex by by 30 hex map uh, 20 something by 30 hex uh, 30 something hexes um, at one inch each, uh, will 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 be a poster size. So you know if you've got a couple hundred, um, even at poster size, you're going to have quarter inch or less. Um, I'm gonna have to link to a detailed article on all that. Um, point is that uh, it will that the software that you use to print will also have a dialog that lets you um, zoom in and zoom out as well for the most part. Uh, and I should point out that you can also select an area of your map. So I can hit select map area and I can click and drag and create this yellow box essentially. And, and then just that yellow box would be printed or exported, uh, I should say, yeah, exported, I should say, um, for either of the options that I'm talking about here as far as. So I can export the whole image. I can export just the selected area uh, as an image. I can export the whole map as, as a PDF. And, and that's probably, um, you know, if you're planning to print, that's probably a pretty useful thing to consider because then you can see what it's going to look like before you print. Um, and then you can also export that selected area as a PDF. If I do either of these options with the PDF, it's going to give me a different dialog. It's going to ask me, hey, how many tiles per inch do you want that map to be? And what's my letter size or what's my page size, orientation and margins? And it's going to span multiple pages if it needs to that you can then you know cut out and, and paste together if you, if you want to. Um, so that's another option and we can we can pick a, a larger size as well if we'd prefer. Um, so that covers the the printing options or the exporting options 
Uh, and of course, exporting as an image is useful for any kind of VTT use, or if you're planning to publish these maps and want to put them into, a, into a, an overall document, that's what you would do. All right, uh, and then last up, as far as our different um, uh, questions, frequently asked questions about Worldographer, I'm going to turn off select here, um, is about notes. And so I'm going to pull up a, I'm going to generate a new city uh, map or a small town map. And uh, I just want to have a haphazard street network here. Hit generate, and it's creating this for us uh, automatically. Uh, takes just a moment for it to generate 2,000 residents, as well as the vegetation around all that. And it's also generating notes about this, so that's the important thing for our, for our demo. These notes, by default, are um, represented by these little yellow boxes on each of the buildings. And I'm zooming in here. Um, so each yellow box is a note. If I want to turn them off, I can just come down here to the bottom, uh, to the bottom left, and I can uncheck this show box next to notes. And that turns them off. Um, but if you want to see what they are, if you're not familiar with them, um, all of these buildings that got placed on the map uh, get some information generated about them. So I can say, see that this particular one is a house. Uh, it's got a family living here, and here's who, here's some names and some traits of each of those people. Um, this might be some sort of a business, so I can click on this, and this is just the shoemaker. And, you know, so there's some staff there that's working there. And um, here we might have a tavern, for example, or actually, okay, lumber yard, so not a tavern. But, uh, oh, and that's actually a good point. Uh, this isn't really in the frequently asked questions, but it's kind of useful. If I want to find a building on the map quickly, I can start typing in that building type. And so, for example, I can say tavern. And what's going to happen is it's going to highlight just the taverns on the map. So if I zoom back in, I can see that this yellow square is down here. That's my tavern. And I can then click on that and uh, see what they have for sale, as well as who's working there and who's, uh, who's in the inn uh, getting a drink or, or a meal. So, a tavern, rather, in this case. So that covers all of that. That's, that's pretty much our, our, our frequently asked questions at the moment. Please, if you've got something else that, uh, that you're curious about, go ahead and post a question here. We also have a Discord that's pretty active. If you go to the, uh, the Morlographer website, you'll see a forum link, which will just give you give you the, uh, the link to our Discord, um, as well as we've got a forum that's a little bit less active. Um, definitely the Discord is probably the most active way to um, get questions answered and to see what other people are doing with Worldographer. So that covers it. Uh, again, as I said at the beginning, please do um, subscribe if you can and uh, watch an extra video or two about Worldographer so we can get those ads taken off. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much.